also the UK High Commission is not the uh, only actors concerned about the situation in Ukraine. The European Union has also been stating uh, their position on the matter. I caught up with the EU head of mission here in Ghana, Ishad Razali. I started off by asking him about his tour of duty. Welcoming has been really great. People are warm, friendly, open. Uh, the country itself, you know it better than me, is a beautiful country, has a lot to offer, so I have absolutely no complaints so far. On the contrary, I was uh, happy to crisscross the country from uh, central region to Kumasi to western region. have to confess I've made a, a short incursion in the Volta region last week and I uh, would like to discover more. Mm. I've been as well in some of the northern provinces. So right. So, so it's a good time for you. That w w Very good. Did, did we meet your expectation or are you expecting much more? No, you, you should not have any expectations in order not to be uh, surprised or not to be disappointed. But uh, the time is uh, really, really good. Once again, great people, great country, uh, great assignment. And I'm particularly uh, happy and honored to serve in this country, which is uh, a key partner. Mm. Uh, stable, uh, democratic, trustworthy partner to the EU, especially in West Africa. Mm. And this makes uh, a lot of the, I would say, the excitement. Right. Interesting. And uh, many would say that if you uh, talk about the European Union and, and its partners across the world, uh, Africa remains a key partner. And that obviously includes nations like Ghana. Uh, we know that Correct. the relations has dated over four decades, I should say. The dynamics at the time it was starting are not necessarily the same as we have it now. But what's your assessment of the status of the EU-Ghana uh, relations? The, the relation between the European Union and Ghana uh, have been uh, improving over the, the years. And uh, just as uh, key indicators, in the last year or in the last 18 months, the president, President Akufuado, visited Europe uh, the European Union as such, not right. only European member states, uh, four times. Uh, we had lately a high-level visit from the Commissioner in charge of International Partnership. It was just a few weeks ago. And these are key indicators of the, I would say, the solidity of the link. Uh, the other indication is uh, the very good match between the priorities we are supporting together, Ghana and the European Union, in terms of uh, upcoming programs, mm -hmm. these are key engagement in terms of uh, job and growth right. support, stimulation, support what we call um, smart cities, mm -hmm. and uh, when it comes as well to governance and security. And these are joint, mm -hmm. I would say, uh, priorities, jointly identified by Ghana and right. European together right. for the years to come. Mm. Uh, and for some experts, if there's anything reinforcing the need uh, for partnership between the EU and Ghana, uh, obviously we cannot shy away from the subject matter of COVID-19. Uh, the pandemic has actually ravaged not just European economies, but also here here in Ghana as well, we are feeling the uh, effect of um, uh, the, the, the virus. Uh, in what ways has the European Union helped nations across Africa, and including Ghana, to battle this pandemic? The European Union has been the, um, the worldwide first partner to support uh, access to vaccines, actually. Uh, and Ghana was the first country worldwide benefiting from vaccine shipped by the so-called COVID initiative funded by the European Union. Um, and beyond the, the vaccines, the European Union is currently supporting the Ghanaian administration, the Food and Drug Administration, mm. to build a facility to produce vaccines on the very soil of Ghana, which is very important, which makes a, a key, I would say, contribution mm. for this partnership, because this will be only a handful of countries like Senegal, mm. uh, Rwanda and now Ghana right. who will be part of this program. But to come back to the other um, intervention of the European Union to um, weather the consequences of mm. COVID, mm. last year only, we have disbursed uh, 87 million euro 
uh, to the Ghanaian government in order to address the socio-economic consequences of the mm. COVID. Mm. And lately this year, we have uh, mobilized 82 million euros on top of that to reinforce the health sector. And now, as I said, we are supporting the country right. to host and to develop uh, mm. vaccine mm. facility. Yes. Not only for COVID, mm. for COVID as well, but for other diseases. Right. Uh, but, but you agree that it's not been a smooth journey getting to uh, the point of vaccine equality. Sadly, experts say uh, that in spite of these interventions that we're seeing, uh, there's that great divide where the global not the more, more, more industrialized nations across the world have access to more vaccines than developing countries such as Ghana. For instance, Oxfam is reporting that Europe, for instance, has had to be in some 15, 50 billion doses of, of COVID-19 vaccines, uh, which is far more in excess than what you've given to countries such as Ghana. Why is the EU not willing to save the world when it has a beautiful opportunity to do so. I'm a bit surprised by what you have been saying because right. this is exactly the opposite. Right. Ghana was the first country worldwide to benefit from vaccines funded by the European Union, mm. first. And secondly, Ghana is one of the very few African countries which will be producing its own vaccines. Mm. So when you are raising this issue yeah. of uh, lack of vaccines to so vaccines, this is absolutely so, but irrelevant. But it's, a, it's, a, it's no, an issue is of irrelevant. equality, I guess. Um, the, the question has always been about equality. There are even challenges of waiving, for instance, the, the issues of intellectual property rights over the production of the vaccine itself. These are issues that confront the EU today. How are you addressing it? I, I guess it feeds into the conversation of equality across the world in terms of access to vaccines. Yes, I equality across the world, uh, there are challenges on all fronts, not only on vaccines. So, on vaccines, as it was an acute crisis, we have done the utmost to narrow the gap. And as I say, you can check how many countries will be able to produce vaccines worldwide. Mm -hmm. And Ghana will be at the forefront right. because of the EU commitment to support the Ghanaian request. But, but will that be enough for Africa, I guess? That's the idea. Right. That's the idea. And not only for Africa. Right. right. But, but the question about waiving the intellectual property of other vaccines, you have not dealt with that as the EU, have you? No, we have uh, dealt with that. This is an issue for the WTO, the World Trade Organization, because this is linked to international um, intellectual property, but this is another conversation. You cannot just force right. businesses to waiver the rights on vaccines or any other, uh, I would say, product. Mm. But this conversation is in one track. The other conversation that we have mm. is how to ship vaccines and how to produce vaccines. Mm. Mm. And, and uh, the whole issue of the pandemic is also having effects on our economy, for instance. Uh, here we are. Ghana is grappling to meet its uh, revenue targets and there's the uh, call by some experts that we need to look elsewhere, look up to the West for support. Is the EU willing to extend that help to Ghana in these very trying times? This is what I've said in introduction. Yeah. We have disbursed 87 million euro grant, mm -hmm. grant right. last year precisely for that and we have disbursed 82 million euro this is loan to support the health uh, sector but beyond that what we are doing is to support the government on its all priority areas when it comes to one district one factory planting for food and job uh, one dam uh, one district and we are supporting all these key areas because these are areas that will make a difference for the very life of every people beyond macroeconomics. Mm -hmm. So this is where we are focusing our efforts and uh, we hope to gain traction and get impact on the ground mm. because this, once again, a joint undertaking right. between the European Union and Ghana. Mm. And, and since you're making some strides in that, some say what may uh, revert uh, or I mean talk to your efforts would be what's happening on the glo global uh, front, the Russian-Ukraine war. Uh, it's beginning to have impact on not just European economies, but also countries here in Africa. We've had uh, our vice president, for instance, talk about the fact that um, what's happening between Ukraine and Russia is beginning to have a toll on African countries. Um, 
given the fact that it's affecting economies such as Ghana, what is the EU willing to do to mediate, if possible, uh, if that's possible, the, the conflict and also as extending some form of assistance to African nations such as Ghana? Firstly, um, the situation, it's not a situation, it's an aggression and invasion uh, conducted by Russia against a sovereign country, Ukraine. And uh, we are in it all together. Uh, there are economic consequences in Europe, there are economic consequences in the American continent, in the African continent as well, in the Asian continent. So we have to face it uh, all together. Firstly, um, on the diplomatic and the political side, we have been uh, together with the Ghanaian authorities and the majority of African countries to condemn the uh, invasion and the aggression from Russia right. on uh, Ukraine, the very day of the, of the aggression. This is point number one. Point number two, as you mentioned, the magnitude of the um, economic crisis, uh, which affects, I would say, uh, all the world, uh, is now currently uh, discussed in order to address and to make, uh, I would say, extra effort. So there are discussions conducted with the IMF, mm -hmm. with the World Bank, with the G20, the G7, in order to, once again, maybe expand the extraordinary effort which has already been made for uh, COVID times. Okay, COVID times called for already extraordinary effort when mm -hmm. it comes to uh, debt issues, right. when it comes to uh, economic stimulation. So these schemes are now, uh, I would say, assessed in order to see to what extent they can be uh, expanded, prolonged, uh, um, in order to address mm -hmm. the but, current but situation. But the fear, the fear yeah. is it may change the priority of Europe towards Africa. Absolutely is that not. This is far-fetched? Absolutely not. This is the reason why the commissioner in charge of international partnership came to Ghana and other African countries, even though, even though the priority of the day was and is very much Ukraine for obvious geopolitical uh, reasons. But even that, you know, the financial envelope for Ghana and the African countries has not decreased. Mm. Uh, the political attention has not decreased, on the contrary, and so you have absolutely no indication that there is, I would say, a shift of attention, investment, mm -hmm. and uh, I would say a priority right. when it comes to Africa. Mm -hmm. Geography and history is to born, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. there are only 14 kilometers between uh, Europe and Africa, so mm -hmm. this was there uh, a thousand years uh, ago, yeah. this will be there tomorrow, this yeah. is the case today. Yeah. So. Uh, and, and some say that what, what we're seeing in the world now uh, is a case or a test case for democracy. That's what the European Union has always um, stood for, the, the fact that there's a need for a free world, a free society and the respect for human rights and all of that across, across the world. Uh, but if you even move away from the Russian-Ukraine Ukrainian war, here in our part of the world as well, democracy appears to be taking a, a backseat which is also going contrary to the ideals that the EU has on democracy. You look at West Africa for instance, there's a growing trend of military takeovers and instability across the, the, the region. The fear is uh, some burgeoning democracy such as Ghana may be affected as a result of the wave we're experiencing in West Africa. Uh, is the EU concerned about what's happening in the sub-region? We are concerned in what's happening in the sub-region in West Africa, which I want to remind you was for long the most advanced region when it comes to democracy mm. in Africa. Right. Between the years 20, uh, 2000 to 2020, it was the most advanced. This is the only region which has a protocol on democracy and on uh, governance. So. Uh, this is important to remind and as you've mentioned there are currently some uh, situations and setbacks that are dealt with primarily by ECOWAS with Ghana at its helm and there I have to say that we are uh, supporting Ghanaian efforts 100% because as you've said Ghana is uh, a truly democratic stable country which shares our concern when it comes to the global order. What are we standing for? We are standing for democratic values. Right. We are standing for cooperation. This is the very idea of the European Union. Right. And we stand for a uh, rule-based international order mm. at multilateral level, mm. like Ghana. 
as you know, Ghana is sitting currently in the UN Security Council, right. and these are very values that we are sharing between Ghana and European Union. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have concerns when it comes to some uh, situation in the region, but we are, I would say, working side by side to try to address them. But, but what's your diagnosis of the problem, really, of, of why democracy appears to be taking a back seat? Um, not just even in West Africa, here in Ghana as well, some professors, very learned people, have expressed the fear that there may be a military takeover. What do you see as that basic problem affecting all of these African countries, including uh, Ghana? I'm not really sure about what you are referring to when it right. comes to Ghana, really. Mm. Uh, the elections in 2020 right. were uh, taken their course, were recognized internationally, uh, open, fair and uh, democratic. Mm. Uh, the, the life in the parliament uh, keeps us, I would say, uh, entertained mm -hmm. to some extent because this is a vivid expression of right. democracy. Yeah. There is real debate, people agree, people disagree. This is the indication of uh, vivid democracy. But, but because the spectacle has been lack, amazing, you, you agree. In, in you the lack, the, in an authoritarian state, for instance, let in, me in Ghana's parliament. In yes. an authoritarian right. state, there right. will not be any debate, right. no disagreement. Right. And this is not what I'm seeing in mm. Ghana, for right. example. Mm. So I don't share your statement or your assessment that there are, I would say, a setback right. when it comes to Ghana. When it comes to the other countries, right. you know, uh, they are uh, military po people who believe they can do better than the elected people. Mm. This is unfortunate, this is what they feel, and this is the reason why we, the European Union, together with the COAS, right. chaired by Ghana, mm -hmm. are trying to find solutions. Okay? But, 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 but I was just talking about, for instance, our Ghanaian parliament. You've witnessed uh, a rather unfortunate spectacle. The, the uh, EU MPs don't fight, for instance, in, in, in the chambers, but we're having s such incidents happen here in Ghana. For instance, Professor Atuba, one of the, the renowned uh, lawyers here in the country, is also uh, warning that if our political leaders do not change the trajectory, then we are in for for the, this for, is his for, statement for, for and very, this is very his, worst times in terms of this is of his statement and this is right. his assessment it's not mine right. and it's not the european union's statement as assessment mm. um, i can tell you that uh, discussion in parliaments in european countries can be really heated mm. and vivid yeah. i can tell you that when minority or majority uh, parties are tabling bills which most of the time could be uh, contentious because this is as well the life of parliament. Uh, this is debated, this is heated, and then this landing. Okay, so I think this is all part of a democratic life. So you don't feel our democracy is at the verge or the brink of collapse? Absolutely not. Right. Uh, let's talk about the 2020 elections, for instance. Uh, your election, election observer mission was here in the country. Uh, you pointed out that um, there was abuse of state resources in, in the lead up to, to the elections, for instance. Uh, many say some of these activities is making the youth uh, despondent. The fact that they don't have any hope in their government, the fact that they, they don't believe that their governments will be able to change uh, the course of the country. Uh, is that the same feeling that you have sitting and looking through all these reports that have come to your table? We have sent in 2020 uh, an independent observation mission led by um, members of parliament because uh, some of them are engaging into that uh, area of um, external action. Mm. And uh, the main finding is that the elections were open, transparent and democratic. And of course, here and there, there are rooms for improvement. We have made recommendations. Uh, main recommendations are linked to the funding of the political campaign, for example. But this is uh, an area where we can make uh, improvement in many uh, places in the world, including in uh, Europe, in Northern America, and so on. And um, the, the most important part is that, uh, as I said, the, the recommendations are for the Ghanaian government and institutions to consider. Mm -hmm. It's not the European Union saying you have to do that, mm -hmm. but they say on this occasion or on this, uh, I would say, situation, maybe something else could have been envisaged. So by and large, 
once again, the elections were uh, open, transparent and democratic. Should we be looking at um, term limits? But, but, but the, the basis is, well, it's not as entrenched and the fear is that, and we've even heard from our president, for instance, say that should be taken to the sub-regional level where you have inter-governmental organizations such as ECOWAS and all of that, making that as part of international law where every country must respect term limits and that's the basis from which but I'm this is this what right. i've been referring to right. in introduction the ECOWAS region which is the most integrated region in africa right. was and to some extent still is one of the most advanced region when it comes to democracy and when it comes to institutional uh, framework right. uh, and this protocol on uh, good governance and democracy, which has been worked on in order to renew it because it's 20 years now, uh, has got this uh, indication of um, terms limit. So we, we, we are already there. But we know that obviously what's the integral part of democracy has got to do with human rights. Um, the EU has also been monitoring that aspect of our national development. Um, you point out, for instance, in some of the reports that you've issued uh, on human rights here in Ghana, that issues of um, the rights of women and children still remains a, a big challenge um, for, for our country, a challenge that our authorities need to deal with. Um, how do we have to go about this and what do you feel should be the priority in terms of the approach to tackling this uh, challenge of inequalities which, which still exist within our community? The European Union and Ghana share those uh, values and cherish them very much, meaning respect for uh, human dignity, equality between men and women, socio-economic inclusion, open debate, solid uh, democratic institutions, so on and so forth. This is the reason why uh, these uh, values, which are the bedrock of the European Union uh, project, are not to be celebrated as we have uh, 65 years, like Ghana, right. 65 years yeah. of uh, a, co a European uh, project behind us. Uh, we will be celebrating the 9th of May, what we call the Schuman Declaration. Right. What is it about? Five years after the Second World War, the most horrific war in the modern uh, history, um, the French Minister of Foreign Affairs proposed his German counterpart, mm. to put together the resources when it comes to coal and steel. Right. Coal and steel were meant to build arms. So the very idea is to build a de facto solidarity, as uh, Robert Schuman uh, called it, right. in order to make it impossible for one or the other former belligerent to build arms in the back of the other. On the contrary, they should pull together their industries mm. to rebuild. Right. Why am I saying so? Because this is at the very idea mm -hmm. of cooperation. Right. And when you add that to human rights, democracy, willingness to ensure cooperation right. and a rule-based international order, mm. these were the values mm. which made it mm. impossible or right. unthinkable that members of the European Union go to war against each other. Mm. And this is where we are um, 65 years yeah. down the line. And, and yeah. we'll be talking about your decision to mark that, a week-long program. Uh, we'll talk about some of the events that are scheduled to happen and what uh, Ghanaians and also the rest of the world could, could learn from, from the EU. Uh, but then, uh, just as you're saying, it's all in line with the issue of human rights. Press freedom is also at the, at the core of this. Um, just um, recently, well, it's not necessarily Europe, but some other members of the international community raised concerns about the continuous attack on journalists uh, here in our country. You've also pointed out that in uh, some of the reports that you've issued on, on human rights here in our country. Um, do you feel or are you getting the sense, is the international community getting the sense that press freedom is not being guaranteed here in Ghana? Press freedom is a key value for democracy worldwide. This is the case as well in Ghana. And uh, for um, 
uh, our case, we, we have followed uh, with great, great interest and uh, great care the follow-up to this uh, case because uh, this was um, an important, uh, important development. Uh, and uh, last year, uh, or this year, the government has uh, adopted uh, a right to information uh, legislation, yeah. which only reinforces the press freedom and we are supporting that very much and we are welcoming that very much. So, as, as we said, um, freedom, expression, uh, journalism are key values, key uh, capital to nurture. We have to do it together, you have your role to do that. Um, we have our assessment, but the key actors are the Ghanaian institutions. Mm. Already the international ratings are not giving us a good picture in terms of how we're performing uh, when it comes to guaranteeing the safety of journalists. Do you feel that this is an area we should improve, improve on? No, this is uh, part of the many responsibilities of the Ghanaian authorities, mm. the Ghanaian journalists, the Ghanaian watchdogs and other people who are uh, looking after this uh, area. Mm. Yes. Uh, the opposition political party here in Ghana feels that there's a culture of silence which is creeping into our society and there would be a need for the international community to intervene mm -hmm. and to help deal with the issues. They've, for instance, roped in the courts claiming that it's not as independent as it should be. Is the EU concerned about this? Have you received the reports and what are you likely to do to mediate and to ensure that there is peace in this country? What we are likely to do uh, is absolutely not meddling into that uh, uh, development because this is the responsibility of the Ghanaian authorities and uh, as far as I'm concerned there is no civil war in Ghana uh, so there is absolutely no uh, reason for us to uh, uh, you know impose ourselves into a situation there is uh, rule of law there are watchdog bodies there is an independent justice and every body is in a position to to make its claim and to get uh, justice served mm. so uh, i would like to challenge the very idea that we would have a responsibility or we would have a role to play uh, in order to make things right into the Ghanaian landscape. But, but the, f all, the yeah. fear is we've exhausted all internal mechanisms and, and that's why the main opposition political party is raising such concerns are you not don't you feel that you're lukewarm about this? There's a need at least to have some influence to try and coming and try and ensure that I'm very both surprised. parties see I'm very surprised that in 2022, right. in the very country of Nkrumah, you are asking for external actors to have an influence on Ghana. Is it what you are saying? Uh, are you calling external actors to have an influence over Ghanaian government uh, or least, Ghanaian country uh, this is what mediation, you are mediation is no. what we need uh, if, no, if I don't, the, if, I don't if believe the opposition this is a political serious party discussion. had, had an I option, don't believe this they, is a serious they, they, discussion they wouldn't have resorted yeah. to the international community no 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 I don't I don't believe in uh, international intervention into mm. uh, a sovereign country's uh, affair the fear is we may go the path of other countries in the sub region if you don't come in to at least speak to all the powers that be. We'll, um, we'll, see, uh, we'll see how it develops, but I, I don't believe this is the, the direction that um, discussion will go. Okay then. Uh, obviously we have an, a beautiful opportunity as a country to learn from the EU during your Europe week. It's starting from the 2nd of, of May. Um, what activities will you be rolling out and why should not just Europeans, but Ghanaians also be very much interested in, in the celebration. The celebration is not about EU uh, teaching anything to Ghana as you are implying, or EU intervening in Ghana as you are calling for, uh, but uh, celebrating 65 years of friendship. Uh, because Ghana um, acceded to independence in 57, the European Union has been created in 57, and this is a great match because since the very beginning the European Union has been siding with Ghana for its uh, development, consolidation of its democracy, uh, reinforcing its regional stance and uh, creating opportunities for its youth. So this is what we will be celebrating during the Europe week or maybe it will last more than one week but basically we will celebrate diversity and exchanges in uh, projecting um, uh, Ghanaian and European movies. 
around the issue of disability. Why is that so? Because it's very important that um, uh, we re reaffirm um, the fact that the society should be open and inclusive to everyone, even disabled people. There will be showcase about uh, what we are doing on terms of uh, plastic recycling. I will be visiting with my colleagues a plastic recycling unit uh, not, far from, uh, not far from Accra. We will be uh, showcasing some of our most brilliant young entrepreneurs benefiting from the European program because this is the future. Future lies in uh, economic growth, innovation, uh, socio-economic inclusion, entrepreneurship. We will be showcasing as well what we are doing in terms of large infrastructure. As you know, we have been part of the Pong Dam since the very beginning. Mm. We are part of its modernization right. and we are part as well of the One uh, District, One, one Dam, um, oh, okay. one dam, dam uh, program. Right. Even in the northern region of Ghana, we have um, adopted a few weeks ago uh, a program for agriculture in order to increase um, the productivity of agriculture, innovation and uh, job creation for women and youth. So these are some of the interventions that we've seen. Um, and are we expecting more activities beyond the second to May period? Are there some activities that... Yes, the, I think out? it will be a bit like the... Um, the the year of return we will do beyond right. <laughs> we will do beyond the week yeah we will do beyond the european week yeah. we are doing so much together with the ghanaian government we cannot just limit uh, for a small showcase for one week uh, i've been with fishermen in the volta region because we feel very much for the situation of sustainability of uh, fishing industry, artisanal fishing, mm -hmm. for example. This is one key area, this is about people, right. this is about their revenue, this is about their daily life. But we are very much engaged as well when it comes to large infrastructure. I mentioned uh, Pong Dam, I'm mentioning energy, mm -hmm. Um, supporting the right. secondary cities, we are supporting the city yeah, of and education Kumasi. as well, I, I guess. Education right. is a right. key component of mm. our engagement. Mm. Tertiary education um, and TVET, because there again we right. would like to facilitate and create the room for uh, better uh, job access for the youth of Ghana. And we will do special events with the alumni of the Erasmus program. The Erasmus Mundus program is, you know, the international bursary program that we are running. Mm -hmm. It's a huge program. Uh, several billions of euros are invested into global knowledge. And there are 300 young Ghanaians who went through this program. Mm. And I will be delighted to welcome some of them here right. uh, next week. And we are all excited about that. Um, I'm interested in TVET as well. Uh, the believers that's one area of our educational system that could unlock the potential of the youth out there. Is the EU willing to partner in some yes. programs that would expand? Yes, we, we are already TV. partnering with the Ministry of uh, Employment and Labour, but we will be, we have to, so TVET is a key area for intervention of the European Union, precisely because this is a way to unlock uh, the hurdle and the bottleneck for youngsters mm. to access the job market. Mm. And as I said, one of the key joint priority areas between European Union and Ghana is stimulating growth right. and job, sustainable growth right. and job. And this is what we are doing with TVET. We have very large program already ongoing, mm. but in the years to come as well, we are partnering with um, several bodies. Um, um, universities and the Minister of Ministry of Labour of Employment, mm. for example. Mm. Mm. Well, so we need to wrap up. Uh, Ambassador, what would be your final words to Ghanaians out there? No, I think uh, it's time for celebration. 60 years of friendship, 65 years of uh, partnership in a moment where the relations are really, really picking up between Europe and Ghana is only reason to celebrate.